Let us go to that place. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you with thanksgiving. Lord, thanking you for our trip thus far, God, and for your protection, God. We ask that you continue to protect us as we continue on this trip and as we go back to our separate homes, God. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come and see the motherland, Father, and learn all that we have learned. Lord, we ask that you bless this food that we're about to receive. Bless the hands that prepared it, Lord God, and give us gracious mercy as we consume it. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Kindly subscribe to this channel if it's your first time. Recently, the National Bar Association from the United States a legacy organization that was founded in 1925 that is made of the prominent black lawyers and black judges who even led the civil rights movement during the 1950s and 1960s for blacks' freedom in America, came to visit Ghana and it was many of their first time visit. Last week I shared the interview with the chairman of the National Bar Association, the Honorable Judge Harry Contrell Jr. and his first visit to Ghana. It's interesting when I talked to one of the presidents, the ex-president of Ghana. Okay. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm wanted to know in the, uh, about how the American government was treating Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you know they gave we they give money to countries yeah. all around the world. Mm -hmm. They gave uh, I think they've just been just given. Uh, but Israel, something like 12 billion. So I wanted to know how much how money, money they gave to they've Ghana. given to Ghana. And he is inspired to want to lobby for money to help with projects here in Ghana. Well, today, I want to showcase more members who traveled with that same delegation. The current president of the National Bar Association, Mr. Dominique Calhoun, and the trailblazing and most awarded black woman judge in America, the Honorable Denise Langford Morrison. This was both their first trip to Ghana and are in support to help our Queen Isi Aikamapa Rashin create lift in programs and projects to benefit the people. Beautiful. But for me, you asked me also about my vision. And uh, it's still being defined. But I'm very excited that I have, you know, over this past year, because as you also opened up, you said, you know, it seems like I just, you know, jumped on the scene or came back. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that anything worth uh, doing, especially doing it well, it does take time. Yeah. So over this past year, after my installment, I also was doing the due diligence to make sure that my foundation and the uh, infrastructure of what I wanted to build from was very solid. So mm -hmm. I've established my 501c3. I encourage your viewers, please, please, please go visit africanroots.org. Um, the name of the organization is African Roots Worldwide. But I also looked at it as a divine moment. What about in this day and age that AfricanRoots.org is still even available as a URL? Well, Listen to hear more about their first time and inspired as African diaspora people to help rebuild together. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's good everybody? I love the conversation. Everybody. I like the introduction. Yes, anyway. absolutely. Hey everybody, thank you very much for checking me out. This is Echo Simpson. I am coming your way with an interesting conversation with a brother here. Uh, I wouldn't say you look like me, but maybe <laughs> in which way. <laughs> Come on, we're brothers. <laughs> we're brothers. We're, we're right? brothers, <laughs> yes. How was it like the first time you landed in the motherland? I mean, yeah. Is this your first time in Ghana? It's not. Well, it's my first time in Ghana, not my first time in the motherland. So okay. my first time actually being in Africa, I was a special guest of Equatorial Guinea. Okay. And um, I, at the time, uh, I was representing a university. Okay. And we were trying to bring young students over to America to mm. ensure that they had an out an opportunity okay. uh, to grow their educational value mm -hmm. and then bring that back to yeah. Africa okay. so that it would improve outcomes here. Okay. So that was my first time to the okay. motherland. But this experience is extremely unique for me okay. because when you talk about everything that we learn about as black Americans mm -hmm. from the slave trade to uh, everything that happened around that context, mm -hmm. And I am a citizen of Texas. Texas, okay. So 
on June 19, 1865, Texas was the last state in America to receive word that slavery had ended. Ended, okay. It had ended four years prior, but Texas is the last state the last. to receive it. And so we have a celebration there called Juneteenth. Juneteenth, yes. As the that. end of, of slavery. So I learned all these things growing up mm -hmm. as, a, as a kid. Okay. So to come here, mm -hmm. see the door. Yes, and to see uh, the door of no return. Yeah. Uh, to experience the slave river mm -hmm. in Asin Manso. Asin Manso, yeah. To, to see Accra mm -hmm. and the expansion, the development, yeah. and everything that yes. Ghana has to offer. It's not only spiritually moving for me, but it also uh, provides this belief yeah. that the African diaspora is immensely connected, it's strong, it's prosperous, and there's nothing that we can achieve as long as we go together. As long as we go together. I love that. Now, this takes me to um, the collaboration between you and then Queen AC Rasheen. Yes. Who's doing wonderful in Cape Coast. Yeah. I mean, she's our queen, yes. you know? Yes, yes. Uh, she's been here a couple of times. Yes. We are like this together. You know, we talk about development and everything. So when you are coming, you're like, Echo, you need to talk to this brother. Now, what is what is going to happen between you, your, either your private organization or this, and then Queen AC? What are we bringing together? Yes. So I have the distinct honor of being the 81st president. You don't have to say it, let me say it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I've been reading a lot about you. Yeah, okay. So I am very happy to be sitting here uh, with my brother, who is the president of the National Bar Association in the United States, uh, the 81st uh, president, Dominic. Uh, which day were you born? Was a Monday, Tuesday? It was a Monday. A Monday, so yes. we have Kojo? Kojo. Kojo. Oh, you've been yes. learning about this already. <laughs> then, <laughs> so, yes. Kojo, I'm, I'm very happy to have Kojo here as yes. the 81st president of the National Bar Association. Yes. So you can go on with that. Yes, so the National Bar Association represents the interest of all black lawyers, judges, and law professionals okay. in the United States. Mm -hmm. We represent the interest of well over 67,000 members. That's 67,000 African Americans who have been admitted to the bar or in some way, form or fashion, ensure that the education of the legal system progresses. Okay. Today, while we're here, we were honored and I know that you interviewed our uh, chair, his name is Harry Contrell. Harry Contrell serves as the chair of our judicial council. So you okay. take my role in representing everyone, whether they're um, attorneys, judges, okay. Okay. law students, mm -hmm. law professors, whatever they are, Judge Cantrell represents all of the judges, okay. all of the black judges uh, in the United States. And so we're thankful for his leadership. But you asked the question in what Queen Essie and I yes. are working on. Yes. And the truth of it is, is that we want to make sure that the economic prosperity yeah. of not only the Ghanaian people, but also of all Africans yeah. are felt within the United States. Mm -hmm. I know that in 2019, Ghana had uh, the, the belief, return. the year of return, yeah. come home, yeah. right? The 400 years since uh, slavery and, and the departure of our people, yeah. come home. Yeah. Here in 2024, our work with me and Queen Essie is to ensure that our professional organizations, okay. uh, the fraternities, the sororities, the individuals uh, within the United States, not only of affluence, but also of professional degree, yes. and even those who don't have that attainment knows the relationship, not only between us and Africa, but more importantly, between us and Ghana. Okay. And so that you know exactly what Cape Coast provided from a symbolic standpoint, yes. what we look at, and then also understanding, like we had the opportunity to do. If you, you know, what slavery did to our people, yeah. marching for seven months down a road, a sh arriving at Asin Manso, mm -hmm. you seeing, you know, that, that slave river and the last mm -hmm. river that you have, and then finally being put in the dungeons for well over three months yeah. and left there, and then, you know, going through the door of no return. No return yeah. And what does that feel like? Mm -hmm. if, if you are uh, a person of Africa, yeah. I can't imagine what you went through yeah. to have your mother, your father, your child stolen from you, mm -hmm. shipped away, knowing 
and you never saw them again. Yeah. I have a son. I couldn't imagine. You know, it would be hard. I couldn't imagine yeah. how that would feel. Yeah. And so for me, the spirituality of this moment yeah. is to ensure that we all collectively embrace okay. what has occurred okay. and that we do our part as Americans, as, America. as African Americans, and ensure that we tell the story the appropriate way. Mm -hmm. We don't let anyone come in between that. Yeah. And we find ways that we can come back into this community uh, to make sure that it, it benefits from not only the American way mm -hmm. and what we've learned in America, but also the collective diaspora. Right. Right. Beautiful. Talking to uh, the chair, he made mention that he's been wanting to come to Ghana, yes. to the motherland, and yes. he chose Ghana. To your perspective, what was it with Ghana that made you all want to come? Aside the spiritual way, I mean, the, 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 the stories that we've heard and everything, what was it with you choosing Ghana? So, but here's the one thing you have to understand about the National Bar. Yeah. I don't tell the judge where to go. So this is the judge's trip. Mm -hmm. Them, Them and, okay. and, and Judge Cantrell, as you said, was yeah. extremely adamant about coming here. Mm -hmm. uh, my obligation is to support that trip. Okay. And to find where we can engage in synergy, mm -hmm. find where we have the opportunity to support the people mm -hmm. and do what we can to uplift all Africans in our way yeah. and also uplift our people, the yeah. American people. Yeah so that they are not naive to what happened mm -hmm. some 400 years ago mm -hmm. and beyond, yeah. but that they understand exactly what we are attempting to do. And that's the work that Queen Essie and I are working on, yeah. is to make sure that whatever we can do to help the people mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and to help Americans understand where we come from yes. and what we could do to support the people here, that is what the critical intersection and interconnectedality that we, Queen Essie and I have. And so through my term, uh, as president, we're going to be working to ensure that we bring more Americans here okay. so that they can ex to have the Ghana experience, experience and make sure that they see exactly what we see, yeah. the, the vibrant community, the opportunity for prosperity and growth, uh, the ability to pour into this workforce right. and help it uh, succeed in any way that we can. Beautiful. Now, the last question that I want to ask you before we end, what can the layman in mm. Africa, in Ghana, yeah. do to support this movement? Because this is a journey where, like you said, the, the, the focus is to help the people here, help the Americans as well. Yeah. So what can we do? I am Echo Simpson, I'm in Ghana, I'm making YouTube videos, telling the story, the narrative. Yeah. What can I do? What can the people do to make this work? Yeah, so you're doing exactly what we all want to do. Okay. You're telling the story. Okay. You're telling the story that black Americans mm -hmm. have never left our African brothers and sisters. Okay. We have a different experience. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we grew up there, yeah. but we are all a part of this, mm -hmm. of this land. And so when we come here, uh, sometimes it's, it, it's not taken the way that we want it to be taken, mm -hmm. right? In, in the sense that we want to pour back into the motherland. We want to experience uh, our people in any way that we can help you. Okay. Uh, we will do that. Okay. The lay person can simply do what you're doing, mm -hmm. making sure that folks around the world know, putting it on the internet, mm -hmm. putting it in YouTube as you described, yeah. in any way to let them know that we are here to support you. But equally, there is a whole commerce when Americans come here. Okay. And so I know that uh, the Ghanaian people, I hope I'm saying that correctly, yeah, yeah, right? Ghanaian. The Ghanaian people uh, are big fishermen, Yeah. right? Yeah. So even tonight, we are supporting the local economy, some local fishermen okay. uh, that have went out into the sea. Okay. They've secured numbers of lobster okay. and fish okay. and prawn okay. um, because we want our works to be given back to you. So uh, for the local economy, for the layperson, as we come here, we come here uh, sowing seeds to okay. ensure that we're pouring back into you. Okay. We're coming here to buy uh, your goods mm -hmm. uh, in any way, form, or fashion mm -hmm. that they are, whether they are beads, mm -hmm. Uh, whether they are arts, tapestries, yeah. arts, mm -hmm. uh, we are here to do that. Okay. We want to pour back into this economy in any way that we can. And so for all of the entrepreneurs that are here in Ghana, mm -hmm. in any way that uh, we can support you, please let us know. Okay. 
because a number of our people mm -hmm. want to ensure not only that we support the economy, that we take the art, that we take everything that you have done right. back to America so people can see right. exactly what it is. Right. I pray I pray that this wouldn't be the first or this wouldn't be the last. Absolutely. Are you going to be coming? I'm, 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 I mean, I can envision that you'll be coming back to Ghana like multiple times <laughs> because things, whatever you focus on, will be working. Yes. All right. Yes. So uh, thank you very much for being on my channel. But your last word to any African diaspora who's never been to the motherland, what last words are you going to tell that person? <laughs> as, the, as the 80th. First president. No, 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 no. As Kojo. As Kojo, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kojo, talk to me. Yes, yes. So, what I would say to you is that Africa is welcoming you home. Ghana may be your first stop when you get here, but there are so many of our brothers and sisters that we have the opportunity to see. I encourage all of my black Americans, all people from around the world, for this African diaspora to come together, to be supportive of one another, and to pour back in to our African countries that are here. You've heard it from me, Dominic Calhoun, aka Kojo. AKA Kojo. <laughs> the NBA president. Yeah. 2023-24, 81st president of the National Bar Association. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hey, thank you very much for checking us out. Put up a comment, share this video, and let's you know spread the good news. Do you know what? Ghana is always the gateway to Africa. And then we are here enjoying the breeze with about 100 uh, 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 judges and lawyers you know, from the United States. They are here enjoying themselves, seeing all that they have to see. But I know that there's one special person that I have to speak to. Um, I've watched some few videos of her uh, celebrating her as a judge in the United States and now in Ghana, my city, I'm privileged. Thank you very much for coming to my city and being on my channel. The privilege is all mine, Echo. Thank you. I am honored and humbled to be in the motherland, beautiful Ghana. The Ghanan people yeah. are fabulous people. I am Denise Langford Morris. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, born and raised. And I am a recently retired judge after 30 years on the bench. Wow. I am a past chair of all the black judges in America here with the National Bar Association. I chaired 2013-2014. I am the present chair-elect of the American Bar Association trial judges from all over America. I will become chair in July for all of the judges at the trial level in America for every state. Wow. I am also recently inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame. I went into the Hall of Fame in December because I've done a lot of first. I was the first black judge to ever serve on the bench. I'm in a suburban county just outside of Detroit, 1.3 million people, the wealthiest county in Michigan and one of the wealthiest in the country. So I served for 30 years. And then I was the first woman dean of that bench and I was the first African-American to ever win a countywide race. Yeah. And I could go on and on about <laughs> what, but I didn't do anything by myself. Mm -hmm. I had great parents. My mother took me to march with Dr. King when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. My mother introduced me to giving back to the community. She was a colonel in the March of Dimes, yeah. and she believed in giving back to those that need help. And this is why I've remained very, very active in so many organizations, too many to name. My bio is very long and I'm very old, yeah. <laughs> but I am honored to be here. And you have adopted my niece. She's called me auntie since she was born. Queen Essie. Queen Essie is my baby. Whoa. Yes. And her mother and father, we are all very, very close. Mm. Her father, I met him in law school at the University of Detroit Mercy Law School in downtown Detroit. My portrait is the first black person and the first woman to ever have a portrait hanging in the law school. Law school. Yes. And so that's where I met Del, Del Mullins. She is Mandy Mullins Williams. That's her American name. Yeah. 
but her dad, Delbert Mullins, is my dear friend and ran one of the biggest, best, most successful businesses in America, in America. written in the yeah. Black Enterprise magazine. And her mother is one of my closest friends, Lula Mullins. She is a dynamic woman that has run multiple businesses and helped start the big business yeah. that her husband started. She helped us study when we were in law school, even though she didn't go to law no, school. Yeah. But we knew from the very beginning that Mandy, your Queen Essie, Queen Essie. was destined for leadership. Mm -hmm. And she just came here not that long ago yeah. to Ghana. Yeah. But she has already begun giving back. She believes in Ghana mm -hmm. and she has my total support. We are going to help her with her NGO, the Africa Roots, and she's creating jobs and trying to help skilled trades and help people with the fishing industry, education. She has a lot of goals and dreams and we all want to work together. And I met Ambassador Butler of the Diaspora and I have worked with the diaspora from America, with Mayor Johnny Ford and other people we've been involved in African countries. I am the chair of the Africa Council for the American Bar Association. I'm in my sixth year as chair of the Africa Council. And what we do is we have organizations all over Africa. We're working to bring training okay. here to Ghana and I thought I'd be meeting with some of the people here, but they didn't get it in time for our meeting in Accra. But we're working on that. But I sit on the big rule of law initiative board because I chair Africa. So I'm on that board with Justice Stephen Breyer that retired from the United States Supreme Court. And so this keeps me involved in Africa because we love our roots. And I've been to South Africa three times. I've been to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I spoke, uh, I have Nigerian relatives. Okay. Yes, I helped raise my cousin, my first cousin's son. His father got caught up in the coup mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And so I helped her raise him. Okay. And he went to, he went to Meharry Law, uh, Medical School mm -hmm. and he's doing excellent. And he found a beautiful, 100% Nigerian wife. They have okay. four children, three boys, yeah. and, and, and his father-in-law is a king, mm -hmm. a chief uh, in Nigeria, Nigeria, in Imo State, Uwiri, okay. in that area, okay. yes. And he, they just had a big party for 3,500 people in Nigeria. For his people. seven, he takes care of all their water, okay. electricity, okay. everything. And he's doing one Yes, job. yes, Mr. Wabusi, Mr. Wabusi. yes, Wabusi. Chief Wabusi. Yes, so my, my cousin is Simeon Udanka, Dr. Udanka, but I have been around a lot. But I am so humbled by the Slave River. Yeah. We went there, I put my feet, walked barefoot, mm -hmm. got in the river. Mm -hmm. It was humbling, so humbling mm -hmm. and so honored to be here. And I have friends that have homes just up the road. Yeah. Attorney Jeffrey Edison mm -hmm. is from Detroit okay. and his wife Shakifa. And they wrote a book mm -hmm. about Ghana. I have the book okay. in my room, yes. Okay. <laughs> and so there's so much to be done, to be done here. but this is so beautiful. Is Look beautiful. at this yeah. ocean. Yes. And, and, uh, and Rabbi Kofling mm -hmm. was telling me that there are places for sale. So yeah. we want property here in Ghana. Okay. So we can come back. Come back. Yes, yes. We love Ghana. Yes, I'm, I am happy that you love Ghana. You're ready to invest oh. uh, with you know accommodation and building and everything. And the people are yeah. so warm yeah. and it's so wonderful. <laughs> Everywhere we go, they just open yes. arms for wow. all of us. Yes, they love us. Wow. Yes, wow. it's like been wonderful. And and our roots, I don't know how we survived, how we came from that slave river, the door of no, no return. return yeah. How did we survive and make it? And now here we are as a group of judges and people from America coming back home and honored and humbled to be with you. So Queen Essie sends her best. 
and I will be talking with her the minute I get done with this interview. <laughs> I'll be giving her a call. Okay. Yes. I, I, I love the energy that came from you. You take it from there and it was going and all that. I am happy that you're making this uh, journey. Uh, I pray and hope that this, this, this wouldn't be the first or the last. It will be happening anytime. Queen AC is, is like, she's a sister to me. Yes. She's always there for me. And uh, I want to say shout outs to you, Queen AC, uh, yeah. Rashid. Uh, I mean, you are doing wonderfully great. So uh, your last word to anybody who is watching that and want to make the decision to come to the motherland. I want to say as black people, we all have to stay strong and we have to stay united and free. We have to work to free everyone from poverty until everyone can have a chance and an opportunity during this lifetime. So don't give up, stay strong, stay together, help one another and always give back to those that are less fortunate that come behind you. Always help our people and we are together with you as one. Let's help each other, let's help our people and then we can all change the narrative together. Thank you very much for checking us out. Yes, Peace. thank you, okay. thank you. All right.